Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to episode 49 of the Hardly Millennial Podcast, where we are young, dumb, and full of opinions. How's it going, guys? Opinions, guys. Yeah, we're at 49. 49, bro. One more to go. One more to go. Tomorrow's a big day. Woo! Gonna be at 50, the big 5 0, oh, man. 5 0. Oh, that, that came fast. That did come fast. It didn't it? It really did. And when you think back to like everything we've done the past 50 days, it's. I can only imagine what the next 50 days are gonna bring to us. No kidding, dude. It, it really is crazy. Ma- Matthew and I have had discussions about this before where. Sometimes during the during this whole building of this YouTube channel, we go through like little lulls where we're just like we we feel like we're not progressing fast enough or something like that, and then all of a sudden we have to think like, oh, we're. I think the first time we had this thought, we were like, well, we're literally only like thirty three days into yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> we'll go like four days without getting a subscriber. We'll be like, oh man, what are we doing wrong? What's yeah. going on? and then we'll be like, oh well. We're only a month and a half in. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, it's I'm anxious to see what the next 50 days are going to bring. Um, yeah. Well, it's going to definitely probably grow just as much, if not more, in I, the next 50 days. I agree. All right. So today, guys, we're going to get just, uh, you know, just have a little fun, get wait, a little lighthearted. Wait. Hold everything. Okay, what? I have a story before we start. Ooh, go, please. I have a story. And it actually, it just happened right before the podcast, guys. Ooh. Um and it almost made me late to the podcast today. Um, so one thing that we don't do is we, we're not late to the podcast ever. No, no. So what happened was um, this morning, Adam ventured out into the world mm-hmm. uh, to get himself some breakfast or whatnot. And I asked him, hey, Adam, could you get me some coffee creamer? I'd really appreciate it, bro. Mm-hmm. And of course, Adam was like, yeah, dude, no problem. So he did that for me. And that was lovely of him. But you see... I fucked up because I don't have any coffee. (laughs) And I didn't realize that I don't have any coffee until it was far too late. Mm. So I didn't have enough time to go get coffee. But I wasn't going to let that stop me because I am an addict (laughs) and I need my coffee. So I said, I have plastic bags and I have whole coffee beans and I have a hammer. (sighs) And I put the three things together, Adam. Not necessarily in that order. And I tried to grind my own coffee beans out on the back porch with a hammer mm. and a plastic bag. Um, and, of course, swing number one, they went everywhere. The bag busted open. The of beans course. went everywhere. But I had gone too far, and I wasn't stopping. So I just continued to mash up the beans, whatever. And at this point, most of the ground-up beans were actually on the concrete. Um, but I felt obliged to... F- Follow this thing through. Uh, you, at that point, you've gone too far, right? <laughs> so luckily, I had just swept the porch this morning, so it wasn't too bad. Okay. I just kind of like gathered the dusty coffee beans from the concrete and into a pile, and then I put them in this little rigged up homemade filter system that will work in my Keurig, okay? Mm-hmm. Like not the one you buy at the store that is for you to make your own cups. Right. I created one of those out of like a coffee filter and like a... A paper clip. Okay. Oh, cool. I made myself a little thing. And I, I put the, the grounds and I did it and it made liquid, made hot liquid. And I put the c- creamer in there and I rushed up the stairs because you got to get to the podcast. Rushed up and uh, took a big gulp and I almost literally threw up everywhere. Oh. Uh, it is probably the most disgusting coffee I've ever experienced. I mean, what kind of taste is that? Is it like burnt? A burnt taste? Is it just like, like a rot? Like a rotting, like a rotting taste. Like does coffee rot? I guess coffee. So it tastes very watery. Okay. And then when you do get the hint of coffee, it's like dirty coffee. Ooh. Like there might be almost as much dust in it as there was coffee beans. Ooh. So it's just a very (laughs) ah. All you really taste is the creamer. Okay. Okay. It's like watery creamer <laughs> with some dust. <laughs> oh, God. Like sticks to your throat a little bit. Oh, man. So it was rough. It's sitting here next to me, and it, I'm probably going to drink it. I'm looking at it, guys, and it literally just looks like slightly, slightly tanner creamer. 
You know, like the the white's just a little like it's more of a cream color than a white. <laughs> well, we have a white tablecloth on the the table that we use here, and I think if I spilled this on it, it wouldn't even leave a stain. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> it's rough, well, guys, but I'm gonna power through it. You know today. what? This is this is how we learn. This is how we grow. You know. <sighs> Cheers, brother. You, you now you now know one way to not Ooh. grind coffee. I also brought water to wash it down with. So that's my epic story of uh, Matthew and his coffee. Um, thanks for listening. On on to the actual conversation. Thank, thank you, Matthew. Well, really quick, actually, going from yesterday. Uh, so you showed me a clip after the podcast because we were talking about Mark Wahlberg and the oh, chin ups, boy. right? We need to clear some things up about Mark Wahlberg, so, guys. So I was so when so if you guys listened yesterday when Matthew told me this, and anybody out there knows Mark Wahlberg is a buff guy. He's Mark a big Wahlberg's guy. a big dude. And Matthew was telling me that he couldn't do ten chin ups. Right. So we after the podcast we looked at the video, which was Ellen. If he was on you know, Ellen, he was on and Ellen. he was doing chin ups for charity. And so he ends up doing like 13, but th- like four of them were done with good form. Were actually done correctly. Yeah. He couldn't do it. So I think they ended up giving him like 22 or something Some dumb because like it was that. for charity, whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, before it even started, he was like, well, just remember, guys, I already exercised this morning. Uh, yeah. And I haven't had m- the same protein that I usually drink. <laughs> and, yes. you know, my toe's itchy. So all these excuses, and then he did it, and he struggled, man. He, he was struggling. You could, yeah. It it blew my mind, but it also brought me back to something. Uh, when I was in high school, my junior year, I, I did wrestling just for a year, right? Uh-huh. And one of one thing that our wrestling coach told us within like the first week was just in regards to like the the different kind of workouts a wrestler has to do compared to somebody who's just trying to like gain muscle, right? Right. right. And he used the analogy that uh, I know people that he goes, I know people who, you know, are big and buff, but you know, they can't throw anybody across the room. And exactly. then I know scrawny looking guys who can take that They're buff guy strong. and throw him halfway across the room. Right, right. And I think that's exactly like the Mark Wahlberg case. I think he does a lot of free weights, does a lot of oh, things. He looks to do. very nice. And he, he knows looks great. Yeah, and he but... knows how to maybe not get the strength but to get the size. Yeah. But then when you see him in a situation where he has to lift his own body weight. He's too heavy for his muscles, man. Yes. It's... I don't know. It's, Muscle weighs more than fat, so there's diminishing returns. The body's a weird thing, man. It's crazy. But yeah, so calisthenics, dude, don't uh, don't skip out on those. <laughs> Looking good means nothing if you have nothing to back it up, guys. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And uh, yeah, I mean, we did just in general kind of put him on blast a lot yesterday, and mm-hmm. it was all in good fun. Yeah, he's a great guy. We but I was just, I was just shocked. Like I had no clue. But yeah, you, you're no, absolutely right. He struggled, right. man. He. It was definitely on. And it was funny because I actually told Adam, I was like, <laughs> yeah. I want to see the video. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll show you the video. And I was like, I think it's on Ellen, but I'm not positive. Uh-huh. So I typed in, Mark Wahlberg can't do 10 chin-ups. I just typed that in. Uh-huh. And literally the first fucking video that popped up was Mark Wahlberg challenge on Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> and it was a picture of him on the stage. I'm right. like, this is definitely what I'm thinking about. You're like, this like, is the video. <laughs> so I'm not the only person who looked it up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> How funny though, Mark Wahlberg. We love you, but love you, you know, bro. do some do some pull ups now and then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on on to today's discussion. What do we have in store for today, Adam? We have our favorite little website here, Conversation Starter Starters oh, World. Oh, that means there was no news today, guys. No news. No I, news is good news. You know, I I really fished, man. I really fished. I was That's going. Okay. Th- I was going through all the news stories. There wasn't even anything on Jesse Smollett. You know, we couldn't Bro, even continue on that truly as a podcaster i mm-hmm. hate when there's no news but as a human being nothing makes me happier than a bright sunny quiet day yeah where no one says anything about anything and we just nothing bad happens if it's... it does we're not going to talk about it today <laughs> not today i love those days man yeah yeah i'd give it to that but i am also as a podcaster the... it's rough yeah, I was going to say, but I'm also the person where when I'm trying to find percent of the podcast, I'm like, God, did nobody get stabbed today? Like, what Nothing. the fuck is going on? No one's rioting. <laughs> exactly. Nothing's on fire. <laughs> yeah, so we just, crazy. So we just have a list of just fun questions here that I'm sure will lead into some tangents and some interesting conversations I, with each other. 
But let's see what we have here. Um, pick us out. Pick us out a winner, Adam. Let's. Ooh, there's so many. There's 350 of them, by the way, guys. Yeah, pick the next one you see. What's the next one? Next one I see. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll really fast. Stop. Ding. What's the most interesting building you've ever seen or been in? That I've ever seen or been in. Uh huh. So I'd assume it's in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, shit. Do you have one that pops out? I'd have to think for just a second. I actually don't. Okay, I do I have mean, one, actually. You do I'm have pretty one. Outstanding. Okay. It wasn't necessarily a building, but... So, my sister married a guy, mm-hmm. and in his family, she married into... An uncle of the husband's owns a fish hatchery in uh, Idaho. Okay. And I got to take a, a trip up there as, a, like, a young teenager. I was probably, like, 13, 14. Okay. You know? So um, it's really cool. But the whole idea of it is he takes – he has, like, giant fields. Think of, like, crop fields, okay? Okay. But instead of these fields being dirt with crops, they're water with fucking fish in it. Oh, cool. Okay, they're just okay. huge fields of fish. And um, they, they're they all specific different kinds, and he breeds mm-hmm. them for different reasons or whatever. But I think he's he's one of the bigger players on the West Coast. Um, so it was a very large facility. So wait, uh, is he raising these fish for like f- food or is this like what gets sent out to like, like what, what's the deal with um, these So fish? many different things. Okay. Uh, they are, they are food, but they uh-huh. also get turned into like animal feed. They get used for I fertilizers. Okay. They get like, anything that fish, anything could a fish for. could be used for. He just, he grows the fish. He literally grows it. Cause they don't like go out to the ocean and fish right. up. All of the fish, uh-huh. like a lot of the fish. I don't know if it's most, but a lot of the fish is farmed, mm-hmm. like actually on the land. They just make artificial tanks and right. farm the fish because it's a lot easier, right? You can open yeah. a door and they all swim out into a net and they're caught, mm-hmm. you know. So, um, but the whole thing is it's not like an indoor facility. This is all done outside. Right. So it's all open and out. And you have to take like quads, like four wheelers, and drive them around oh, to get fun. to the different places. <laughs> and then his house, he built his house that he lives in uh-huh. on the same property as the hatchery. So you could literally go from the house, which was custom built and gorgeous and huge. Of course. You could go from that and four wheel out to the to the fish farms and check out the different fish. And you can oh, put wow. little they have like these little like dippers that uh-huh. you dip in there and the fish bite onto them because I don't know they're into it and you can pull the fish out it's super easy you just oh, like wow. dunk it in there and you can pull a fish out dude that so, is a cool place to visit yeah so he would go around and like show me all the different ones and teach them to me and shit and okay it was really neat um, not necessarily fantastic like architecture or right. anything like that well and that's what I was trying to think of because I, I mean when you think of like these kind of buildings and stuff, first of all, a lot of the ones that are like abstract and actually like cool to go in, I feel like are in Europe, right? You know, yeah. or not America. I would, you know? I would agree. And as somebody who's never ventured out of America, you know, my my choices are very limited. Right. But I mean, I guess, I guess probably the coolest one I I was in, just as far as something that was different, was probably like the Luxor in Las Vegas, the Pyramid Hotel. Oh, the Pyramid I, Hotel is cool. Yeah, I I've just I had just never been in anything that wasn't like straight up and down. You know, this it had the it has the elevator that goes up diagonally, and the rooms are all set up like it's. That's it not called an elevator. Cool. It's yeah. called something else. Yeah, the, didn't we just hear this? Yes, somewhere? we did. Somewhere? Okay, uh, yeah. the Game Grumps were just talking about. Yeah, this that's right. That's episodes. right. It's funny you bring that up. But uh, I've been there a couple times in my life, and it was all you know, and I always just looked forward to it just because just that it's like oh we're staying in a fucking pyramid you know but for sure but i've other, been in that hotel it is pretty mm-hmm. insane but um, otherwise all we really have here is just you know skyscrapers and mid-sized tall buildings, tall buildings. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean i've been to some pretty cool like um fairs like carnivals but yeah big, like fairs fairs or like the science center maybe has some cool you know little stuff in there well but. where i'm from tucson they have mm-hmm. the pima county fair there mm-hmm. and the Pima County Fair is one of the larger fairs in the country. Oh, it's, really? it's a really big deal. People come from all over. Bigger than the County one Fair. in uh, Phoenix? Um, I want to say yes. Okay. I want to say the Pima County Fair is one of the big dogs. Oh, wow. Um, I'm sure there's bigger ones. Right, okay, I'm, I'm sure. not saying it's the biggest in the world or anything. But it's a pretty big deal. People uh-huh. come from the states all around us to go to it. Oh, cool. So, And I, I used to go there every year because I lived not far from... It was just out past Vale in the fairgrounds. <laughs> I actually had no idea that they did a separate fair down there. I thought it was just like, oh, Arizona gets one fair. It's in Phoenix. No, nah, the Pima thing. County Fair is huge, dude. 
okay, huge. Wow. They have like big name bands, like actual right. like triple A bands that will go and play. Oh and, wow! Yeah, it's it's a big deal. The people spend many tens of thousands of dollars at the fair. We're gonna have to go this year. Oh, dude, I'll go to the Pima County Fair. Yeah. When is it? Do we know? Because <sighs> I know the no, ones that happens when in you, Phoenix the, is like November. The thing is, when you live in Tucson, you just know when the fair is. Because right, you just start to yeah. hear about it. <laughs> so, I don't know. You probably Google it and figure it out. Okay. We'll have to make a point to go there and I'll let all of you know how it is. It's definitely a good time. So, some of that is probably some of the cooler stuff I've seen. Yeah. What I always enjoy doing at the fair, I mean, I do enjoy the rides, but one thing I always enjoy at the well, I think everyone enjoys this at the fair, is going into the little areas where they have it looks like set up almost like a con everybody has like their booths and stuff like that with their, oh like, like a gem and mineral like, show kind of thing yeah or like a home show well no 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 not a home show uh, the one in phoenix has this where they'll have these areas you can go in and people will have booths set up and sometimes the booths are just little trinkets that talk about at the fair made. yeah at the oh fair. yeah absolutely dude they yeah, have yeah, entire yeah. um yeah you know, like a hangar for airplanes? Yeah. Like how big that would be? They have like multiple of those size buildings. Yeah, that's and a, all inside is air conditioned. It's nothing but booths, like what you're talking about. That's all I'm, that's what I'm fucking about. Do you can get everything. Fair. You can get jewelry to weaponry to souvenirs. To, oh, hell yeah. Dude, I got a fucking a, a legit like replica Zelda sword and shield at the fair oh, one that's year. that's cool. The master sword uh-huh. and then the, the shield. Oh, dude. It was like legit as fuck too. That's cool. I sold it. That's but I used <laughs> you to sold have it. it. Hey, gotta gotta make that. My dome, buddy man. bought a crossbow, like an actual crossbow. Really? That we bought at the fair. Sure did. <laughs> what? Bought a fucking crossbow. It's a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> we took it home. It really worked. <laughs> yeah, it came with bolts. It came with instructions. It, we shot crossbows, man. They're hard to load. The, oh, I the I've biggest heard, bitch yeah. is loading that fucking thing, dude. I've heard. Yeah. Once it's loaded, it's fun to shoot. You just pull the trigger and it fucking shoots. It's great. Right. Good time. The, you know, another twenty minutes to get it nice and loaded again. Oh, it's terrible. It's bulky. Mm-hmm. It's in. It's really hard. To, have you ever shot bows? Like just an actual yes, bow and arrow? I've shot just a bow. Um. So that shit looks easy on TV. No, it's hard. I don't know if you guys have ever shot a bow before. The audience. Um. It's hard. Yeah. You have to be super fucking strong mm-hmm. to wield a bow. Yes, big um, time. There's even techniques. There's tricks. Like, they'll hold it, like, up towards the sky mm-hmm. and kind of use gravity to draw the string. You know. But I, I had an opportunity to shoot bows with a friend of mine um, when I was, like, I don't know, probably, like, 16, 17, mm-hmm. 18, somewhere in there. So I was older. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wasn't in bad shape. But I wasn't strong. I only got that thing drawn like once, dude. I couldn't do it. The uh, Vince used to have one of those like legit bows. I think Vince could probably wield a bow. He's yeah. Big. He well, he was the first one who like showed me how to you know use like a professional one. Because when I was younger, yeah. I think my brother had just like basically a bow with a string, right? Oh sure. Whereas like he had one of the ones that had like no. the cross strings. on Yes, there I'm talking about like a pulled, full yeah. on like a like and those. Uh, carbon fiber yeah. bow, dude. And those, like, that caught me off guard because when I got to a point where I was, like, trying to actually pull the bow back, I was like, oh, wow, there's a lot of fucking resistance it's hard. here. Like, and it geez. does lock. If you yeah. can get it far enough back, It'll the, lock. the newer yeah. ones now, they lock. But imagine, dude, back in the fucking days when you were an archer and shit, mm-hmm. like, I'm talking medieval days, okay? Yeah. Those longbowmen, like the English longbows, mm-hmm. they had just as much tension, dude. Yeah. But they didn't lock. Those guys had to fucking draw those things, and they stood, they would put the bow on the floor. Mm-hmm. It went from the floor, and it was as tall as they were. Yeah. And they would draw those fucking things, dude, and then, <sighs> and do that for hours. Yeah. In a battle, you would just do it for hours. Oh, yeah. That's intense, dude. They, the, the, shit that, the shit that we used to use as weapons and use well as weapons dude, is astonishing sometimes. They must have been in such good shape back then. Mm-hmm. They had to have been. They at least have a strong bar, a strong bow arm, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, but I thought that was funny. I've never shot bows again since. Yeah, I, ha- I haven't either. I've, I've, if I ever did again, because I've always wanted to like hunt, like at least just once, yeah. just say I've done it. You know, yeah. like kill something, eat it. But you, you know, eat what you kill. Yeah, eat but, what you uh, kill. <laughs> That's our mantra. But like, but like, and I've always wanted to do a like. If I was going to do it, not using a gun, like using a bow, like trying right, to go right. as like organic with it as possible, I guess. Sure, get but, the whole experience. But yeah, I've always I've always wanted to do that. But I need to fucking learn to, you know, wield one of those fucking bows first. All <laughs> right, so I, 
I went through and uh, scrolled again and stopped, and the one I'm on here, I haven't even read it yet, it's just, if you were given a PhD degree, but had no more knowledge of the subject of the degree besides what you have now, <laughs> what degree would you want to would you want to be given to you? So what? where can you fake it and make it the best? Yeah. Uh, I have no more knowledge of the, yeah. I could probably go pretty far with like a sexology degree. Sexology? Is that a thing? I, I is there like, so. like is there sex like, therapist? No, no, like having sex, like being super good at doing it. Oh, it's a thing yeah. that's called a uh, Can you get a PhD juggalo? in that? A juggalo? If there's a PhD a juggalo, for that, juggalo. but I only had as much knowledge as I do now, mm -hmm. I'd probably be okay. I yeah. could still live a happy life and make it work just fine. There you go. Yeah. That's uh For sure. Yeah. I that can't be too much more that I don't know about. I don't it. think there's a PhD out there for it, but I like I, to think I'm an expert. You know what? You go, Matthew. Thanks. You follow your heart. I just want you to be happy. Thanks, I could, bro. I could probably just do well with film or entertainment, something like that. I already did go to school for for a little bit as you, far as something you get a PhD that I have. In you could totally get a PhD in film. Probably Absolutely. like film history or some shit like that, yeah. Oh. I don't know. PhD in history. It would have to be something that no one else knows shit about. So you can make mm -hmm. things up and it wouldn't matter. That's true. You know so what I mean? <laughs> what's something that nobody knows shit about? Well, pretty we much go, pick anything. Oh, like if being it's not a chiropractor. I feel like nobody understands the, the like, what a chiropractor does. Like, I feel like if you go to a chiropractor, a chiropractor could basically just tell you anything. And you're just going to be like, <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> I think that's true. <laughs> like, that's am, I, true. am I wrong? No, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to think, and I don't know what the fuck a chiropractor yeah. is. Yeah. Like, I feel like if you went to a chiropractor, the chiropractor was like, okay, well, we're going to have to, you know, break your back and then put it back together here. You're going to be like, well, I mean, you're the professional. You're the professional. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> do what you got to do, doc. <laughs> um, pro I mean, what, like philosophy? I guess philosophy would be like an obvious one that a lot of people do, right? Yeah, opinions, man. Right? Yeah, yeah all we're, it, we're all philosophers. You know, it's just asking why are questions that other people don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think if you have enough time to work at it, you can get good at anything. So True. What do they say? They say if you want a college degree, all you need is a library card, right? Is that what they say? Yeah. It's like, I've never heard that, them say I that. I think that's like a saying. Like okay. If you want to learn something, you can literally just go to a library and learn just as much as, you know, or at least almost as much as you could in like taking a class. I would say that maybe that holds true to like YouTube. Yeah. Or Google. Mostly YouTube. I think YouTube really probably educates more people nowadays than colleges do. That's <laughs> true. Honestly, like on the grand mass scale. Yeah, true. But I think YouTube is the best at learning the core basics of something. Yeah. Whereas I feel like if you truly want to get more in depth with whatever you're trying to learn, that's when like the books are useful. Because usually it's like if you're taking like gardening, for example, right? If, mm -hmm. if somebody's trying to, if you look at the videos on YouTube of somebody gardening, well, yeah, I mean, they'll have multiple videos and everything. But I feel like if you really want to get in depth with like everything that goes into it, you find somebody who is willing to sit down and write a 500 page book about it. I guess. I mean, a book is just the olden day version of content. It's just it's the same thing as someone making a video a hundred years ago. You just watch their video. Now. I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess if you know the this this imaginary gardening video person had you know five hundred videos, you know, I mean, I guess it'd be yeah, kind of the same, the same thing, right? But... It just depends, you know. It depends how much knowledge the creator has on the subject. Mm -hmm. So. It's hard to like verify. So with books, there was a process of people who were like who dubbed it efficient to educate people with. True. There was like a board who was like, okay, this is part of our standards. We're going to educate people with this. Mm -hmm. But on YouTube, anyone can put anything up. Well, just True. about anything up. Right. So as long as you do a little bit of research into the person mm -hmm. and make sure you know that they're not full of shit, you know. Um, if they were a professional botanist for 30 years and now they have a YouTube channel, then they could uh, probably yeah. teach you a lot. I guess that's true. I guess for some reason the first thing that like came to my mind were just like hobbyists, you know, who did it a lot. Yeah, and there well, you have to be careful. And there, and... you know. But I mean, dude, just as you said, though, I'm sure there's people out there who, you know, were like botanists for 30 years and they made a yeah. YouTube channel. And yeah. I think um, a, a, a nana, a grandma who's mm. been 
far or not farming, but growing her own vegetables um, in a backyard for thirty years. Mm-hmm. She's just as good at um, teaching you about gardens as a botanist is. True. She might not know all the um, terms, or, terms, yeah. and scientific names of them, but right. a person who's been doing anything for thirty years is. Mm-hmm going to be somewhat good at it. They're going to have some tricks and some tips. Yep, that's true. So, I mean, you just got to be careful what you watch, like anything. Yeah. You know, just do your research, guys. Do a little bit of research. Which is what people really struggle with anymore these days. (laughs) All right, I'm going to scroll, and then I'm going to stop. Boom. Do you think that children born today will have better or worse lives than their parents? Why do I feel like we talked about this one before? I don't remember talking about this one. You know what? Okay, well then. Do you think that children born today will have better or worse lives than their parents? Assuming that there's not like World War Three, I would say better. Yeah. I think that it always gets better. Mm-hmm. I think the only time it doesn't get better, like the immediate next generation, mm-hmm. is if there's a catastrophe. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I'd have to agree with you unless there's right. some like apocalypse or another there's world like a huge war famine or, or something. Yeah, famine. But assuming plague. things keep cruising like this. I don't think that in our kids' lifetime you'll have World War III. I don't. Well, let's I th- let's specify it a little more then, because I think this because I think this is a conversation we have a lot, especially these days. And I think the conversation comes from a conversation we've had before in regards to our kids going to be better these days, growing up with the kind of technology that they have now. Or are they going to lose out on things that we uh, were able to experience? Uh, because we didn't have technology readily available. Right. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. But no more than what's already been happening throughout history. Like right. we've already become very detached from nature mm-hmm. where our ancestors were very much in tune with nature. Right. Because the technology has taken us away from nature. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that kind of pattern with anything will keep going i think well and i think it will, well i actually in regards to that i actually think we're seeing a little more of uh a relapse into nature because i think we've actually become so saturated where uh i mean fuck i remember when i was younger in elementary school that was when like the recycling thing got really big. Yeah, you know, schools started to have two different trash bins: one yep. for recycle, one for trash, that. and all of those. You know, and then all of a sudden, I think we've seen this spike since we've been younger of everybody trying to be more healthier, more you know, uh, go green, spend more time in nature, save the plants, save the animals. That's so I would, true. so I would actually say I think we've actually technology has caused us to relapse and go back to those roots a little bit. Yeah, but I don't ever think you'll see masses <clears throat> of humans going back out to live in the jungle or to True. go back no, out and live in the forest extreme. or the plains of England. Or right. I think that, you know, we're definitely into houses and shelter and community mm-hmm. now. I don't see that going anywhere. We, we it's, it's almost like we want the scenery, but we also want the convenience, you know. I think what you're seeing is um, sim- – Simplicity mm-hmm. come more into play than it used to be. Yes, minimalism. So, at least in America, we're experiencing a big thing between baby boomers, who mm-hmm. are the generation that are our parents, like mine and Adam's parents would be boomers. Right. Um, and then millennials, who are me and Adam, who are now at the age where we're starting to buy houses and starting to own things. Right. You know, in your in your young twenties, late. Uh, or late 20s, early, early 30s. 30s yeah. So what they're starting to see here is that our parents bought like very big houses. Mm-hmm. They tried to go for as much square footage as they could. They kind of liked a little mini mansion mm-hmm. sort of deal. And what you're seeing with our generation is we like all the same accommodations of mm-hmm. that. We want running water, a bathtub, all that, all that kind of stuff. But we want it in the smallest amount of square footage possible mm-hmm. because – we're starting to experience more of your house is not your castle anymore. You go out, and the only thing you use your house for is utility. You eat there, you sleep there, you wash yourself there, and then you go back out into the world. Right. Um, so I think you are right you were, in that sense. So we're not mm-hmm. going back out into the forest, but the forest now is the streets of Manhattan or I see is, is society. Yeah. So we are starting to move more towards 
being with each other more and being yeah. away Be from more your social. castle. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah, it's a, and in those cases, I think the next generation is going to be. F- just fine if not you know well better you know than ours at least hopefully you can only hope the next generation is always better well they say that like the zers and the millennials are the least social generation yeah right that we never talk to each other at all you Mm -hmm. don't go out and see anyone face to face but in reality we are in fact the most social generation that has ever existed on planet earth just a very different way um you have instant immediate face-to-face access with anyone on the globe who Mm -hmm. holds the same device in their hand that you do. Yeah. Billions of us have these devices. So for a boomer to say that they were more social than us, Mm -hmm. um, that is completely false. That Mm -hmm. is not a correct statement to make because you did not have access to people your age in China or Indonesia or India or France. or You could pen pal them. You could write them. But you couldn't pick up a screen and see their face and talk in instant time with them. True. Which you can do now. But I also think that there are those within our generation. Because So, like, I agree with you that we spent – we definitely are, I think, the generation that socializes more. But as I've said earlier, it's a different kind of socializing, right? It's It's – socializing through the means of technology and what and what we've and i think what we've seen is that that does have its negative effects when you're not getting a face-to-face now you you talked about you know how we have facetime and everything now and that is correct you know but that is also kind of fairly new as far as that being a very dominant way that people are now communicating with each other whereas like for the most of our growing up it was through texting or email to where you were not getting the (laughs) face-to-face interaction but think about what this new technology has led for us Mm -hmm. we now have a worldwide language right it's called emojis yes we do no matter (laughs) no matter who you are in the entire planet if you hold this device in your hand everyone understands Mm -hmm. emojis and they understand the like WTF, BRB, AFK. Mm. Those are old school ones, guys. But, <laughs> um, you know the the what you call it when you abbreviate the abbreviations. Yeah. yeah, there there is a worldwide language now yeah. that people who speak different languages are all fluent in this internet language. True. And what's fascinating, Adam, is there's only about seven different things you need to call yourself a society. Mm-hmm. So. It's things like a language, Mm -hmm. a currency, a religion, a government, and then there's a couple others, all right? So I think this spread of information, this this internet thing, we're moving towards a one-world society. I think we're moving towards being Mm Earthicans and that you're just going to come from Earth. You're not going to come from all these different countries, all right? And then that's going to be more important when we start to spread out into other planets and things. Right. All right. But not to get super spacey with this. That's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, help me out here. You're you're talking about you need seven things to be. Okay. Yes. Yes. So we just got one of our seven things pretty recently since, you know, Facebook or MySpace came in the last 20 years, we got a language. Mm -hmm. Now everyone on earth speaks a similar language. Uh, we already have had the currency for a while. It's the mm-hmm. American dollar. Every country, no matter what their currency is, they deal with the dollar. True. Uh, and you can argue that the religion has come down to pretty much Christianity has overruled most of the populace of Earth. Mm-hmm. So we already have a lot of the key things that you would really need to be a society. True. I think this was just a, a necessary a step stone. that we were going to take anyway as a society. I, I so I agree with that. Even even more even to put more uh, more stock into that theory. Also, I see commercials for this little item, this little device that's been created all the time. It looks like this little egg. Uh-huh. Right, but you like talk into it and it has like a setting to choose a language. Uh-huh. So if I go to like South Korea, but I can't speak South Korean, but I need to like find a way to get around or something, I can speak into this. I can like tap onto somebody's shoulder, speak into this thing, and say, "Do you know where the bus stop is?" And then hold it up to them, and it will repeat back what I said, but in uh, Korean See. for the person to listen to. So now you don't even have to learn the other languages. And yeah. 
Um, I that's just I think that we're moving towards that. Mm-hmm. But the original point of um, we're more social than ever, yeah. even though we weren't. Another instance of that, another thing that people say, well, millennials and Gen Zers don't read anymore. Mm-hmm. They never read books. They don't. They're gonna lose their uh, literature. Ah, and, they're and listening it, to them now. Well, they're listening to them, but we read more than any humans that have ever lived on Earth. In our day-to-day lives, think of how much you read. True. N- correct, we don't open up a book and sit there and read a book, like mm-hmm. one consistent story, but all day long, what are we on? Mm-hmm. We're on this Facebook. Yep. And what is Facebook? Endless, endless walls of text and yes. pictures, which is just a book, baby. It's literally <laughs> called Facebook. <laughs> All right? We spend more time with it now than ever before yep. as a species. We read constantly. And it started with video games, dude. Mm-hmm. People said that we went away from reading in video games. No. The first games were literally fucking text-based. That's to true. get the story, you had to read them. When you talk to someone in a game to communicate, to get your mission, you read all of that. Mm-hmm. When you're talking to the other human players in the game, how do you do it? In a chat <clears throat> screen that's in the corner. You're typing and you're reading. <laughs> we read more than ever before. So because older generations don't understand technology, uh-huh. they think we're getting stupider. But human beings, if you put us on a chart, we are by leaps and bounds, getting smarter and more intuitive and tied together as time goes. Right. This is the best world that any human has ever lived in. True. Um, Anyone else in history would kill to live in the world today. True. And tomorrow will be a better place than today was, Mm -hmm. just statistically. So all of you out there who are, you know, think that the generations, you know, are horrible are going to be bad, just remember, somebody thought that about you one day. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, it's because it's we don't understand. I'm starting to think it. I mean, I, yeah, see, I, I, see, I see Gen Zers, and I don't understand them. I definitely, as somebody who works with a bunch of them, I definitely have my moments where I'm just like, I, I don't realize how disassociated I am with the the next generation coming up until I hear some of the lingo. They're or, smarter than any human that's ever been mm-hmm. alive, though. They, they, def- have, they definitely understand the technology better than the rest efficient. of us do. They don't even laugh anymore. <clears throat> they got rid of laughing. <laughs> I, yes. They just say, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. And that means I just laughed really hard for a few minutes. That's a lot of – so I've realized <laughs> that a lot is a lot of – what I see kind of defines this new generation coming up is this, this might be the wrong word for it, but like ironic or satirical humor. Right. So like, yeah. like I'm dead, you know, meaning that's really funny, you know, it's, right. it's ironic. Right? right. You know, and I see, a, I hear a lot of different kind of lingos like that. Like a lot of them will say like, I'm garbage. Right. Like uh-huh. if they do something and mess up, I'm garbage. I'm just, just throw me out with the trash. Right. There's a lot of ironic and satirical humor that I feel like, whereas like when you and I grew up, it was very much more blunt humor. Right. It was right in your face humor. I guess that's true. You know, I guess. it's. Yeah. But it's the, it's, it's those just the, the, the earn to be different. Yeah, the earn, but it's the same thing that every generation growing up goes through. You know, this yeah. is just what you notice from the Gen Zers. But <laughs> I had oh. hair in my mouth. <laughs> I don't, yeah, he just had a moment. Ah. That was crazy. But anyways, oh, still there. Uh oh, hold guys. Okay, we're good now. All right, we're good. But we're anyway, back. <laughs> we're bad guys. <laughs> anyways, but those are the things that when I hear sometimes I'm like like. Those are when I start to feel a little more disassociated with the new generations coming in. Yeah. We start to realize your age where you're just like, oh, like there's there's a whole new different set of way of talking now that but I am not privy to. Think with. of how efficient that is. Yeah. You don't have to spend minutes of a conversation laughing anymore. Mm-hmm. You just, you can still be happy, but you express it with, I'm dead. <laughs> and you move on to the next piece of information. I guess it saves energy. You know, you, sure just, save, you just save the good laughs for when something's truly funny. Yeah. I don't think people are as lazy as we think. I nah. think we work really hard to make a comfortable life for ourselves we work very hard for convenience that is hell for yeah sure. that's what you should do all right let's scroll oh uh, yeah give me the next one what's the next one and stop i got plenty of philosophy if animals could talk which animal would be the most annoying 
Well, I can already tell you that there is an animal that can talk, and they're obnoxious as fuck. Birds. And they're called birds. Fucking hate birds. Um, that was particularly be my Panama. Yes. <laughs> Panama is the king of the annoying fucking birds. That's the millennial bird, by the way, guys. I was gonna say, why don't you explain to them who Panama is? I don't. Have we not introduced? I guess you guys have never seen no, Panama he was, yet. He was gone by the time uh, we started. So the hardly millennials, collectively, mostly Justin, um, have. What would you call it? Dual ownership. Dual ownership of a um, scarlet macaw. Yes. Uh, and his name is Panama. Green winged. Uh, a green winged macaw. Green-winged excuse macaw. me. He's yeah. not a scarlet macaw. He's a green winged macaw. His name is Panama. Uh, he's what, like 10 years old now? Some shit like that. Some shit oh, like no, that. no, no. He's my age. Him and he's I were your age. age. The same age. So 27. He's 27 yeah. now. Uh, he'll live to be like 60, <laughs> 70. Um, and he's a fucking handful, guys. So we get him through half the year. We don't have him right now. We'll get him back for the summertime. And uh, he talks all day long. Yep. And he, But only when people aren't around. I was going to say, he <laughs> knows, he understands. Basically, they have the intuitiveness of a four- to five-year-old. Yes. So think of having a four-year-old as a pet, <laughs> but it's legal <laughs> because they can't, well, they can talk. Well, they don't have any rights, so you can just have this four-year-old in a cage. Um, it's crazy. They want to get out. Mm-hmm. They want to be with the people. They will fucking yell at you. Panama, if you piss him off, he will hold a grudge for days. Yes. Where he remembers that you pissed him off, and you will literally have to bribe this bird into liking you again. It's the weirdest. F- I hate birds so much. He's fascinating to me. I don't. I don't mind <sighs> birds too much. I hate them. I was not excited when we got Panama the first time, and I was very excited when he left. But yes, the so the first time I heard Panama speak. <laughs> so when we first got Panama before you lived with us, uh-huh. we. Uh, I they I was told that Panama could talk. I hadn't heard it yet. We had had him for a good amount of time at this point. And then all of a sudden, I'm upstairs. I'm home by myself. And I hear something. But, like, because he's downstairs, it just sounds like a whisper. I'm like, right, like, right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm like, so I, I pause the TV. And, I'm like, and Adam's haunted, by the way. Adam's cursed. So he's probably thinking about that at that moment. You'll, well, you'll hear more about that on Halloween. Yeah, he's literally so, cursed. <laughs> so there's a uh, – so I'm like, what the fuck is this thing? So I'm like seriously thinking like something's in the house or something's <laughs> happening to me right, again. Like right. what the fuck is happening? Uh-huh. And so <laughs> I start to go downstairs – and I start to hear it more clearly and clearly, and it clearly is words now. <laughs> and you're Excuse like, me. fight or flight. And it was, well, it was, come here. Come here. <laughs> come here. So when you're the only person <laughs> alone in a house, and all of a sudden and you clear. hear a, vo- a very clear, precise voice going, come here. <laughs> you're doesn't like make, what the fuck is doesn't going on? make you feel good so i remember going downstairs and i could and this was before i could make out exactly what it was and i was like behind the wall trying to figure out what this was and all of a sudden i hear come here again and i almost fucking shit my pants dude. <laughs> you're like it's right there <laughs> yeah. whoever it is is right there like, and then all of a sudden there's the fucking bird and i was like are you fucking kidding me yeah he talks oh guys and it's horrible if we are all upstairs and the bird is downstairs where his cage is Uh you'll hear (laughs) just these loud obnoxious crows i love him he's like like, come here come here (laughs) pretty bird pretty Pretty bird bird. panama panama Panama. yeah he says panama in the same panama 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 in the same cadence as the coach from Waterboy he says Gatorade. Gatorade is Panama. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. Oh, it was the most. We're going to hate it having him back and having to do a podcast. Oh, boy. You guys might get to hear <laughs> Panama a little bit. There's no way we're going to be able to shut that bird up. Oh, he'll dance. Oh, he has a dance. He does. He's fantastic, guys. You'll see Panama. You'll, we'll show, you, show him to you in a video. You'll, you'll see him. You'll see him. <laughs> I but, love Panama. But, yes, birds. So we're in agreement. Birds are just the most annoying Birds are the worst. Animals. If there was another animal that could talk, that – oh, fuck. Um, you know what I think would actually be annoying if they could talk? A dog. 
I was thinking dog or cat. I was thinking a cat would be more I think obnoxious. a cat. I think if a cat could talk, they wouldn't say much. They'd be really super intellectual and only say like profound things. Maybe <laughs> like <laughs> like but like they'd say just random things. Like they wouldn't say anything for a week, and then they'd like rub up on you and then look at you and go, "Go, you're not perfect," and then just walk away. I think cats would or be like shit obscure like that. warnings, like never cross an open body of water. <laughs> just, just scurry off. You're like, what the fuck? What does that mean? Like a week before you're going on a trip, they'd just be like, don't get on the plane. It's and just something crazy. Just, yeah, that yeah. would that uh -huh. would be a cat. Uh -huh. That would be so, cats. So not annoying, but just like... <laughs> assholes. assholes. Assholes, yeah. But like a dog, a dog would be like, oh my God, you're home, you're home, you're home. Pet me. Could, could you imagine if a cowboy, cowboy could, could speak? Holy shit, Adam. <laughs> holy shit. Would that not, would this not I literally be... have my head in my hand right now, guys. I'm like, <laughs> I've never had that thought before. Would this not be the most annoying household that that dog could speak human words? He, I just feel like he wouldn't be very charismatic. No. It would just be all of a sudden he'd be quiet and then he'd look up at you and just be like, hey, hey, you. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and you'd be like, what? And he'd be like, I don't know. And he'd just go back down and lay down. <laughs> you know, like, I that's what think. cowboy would be. Because <laughs> it, he does that. He'll look at he you does. and he'll kind of like paw at you and then you'll go to pet him and be like, no, I don't. And he'll just run away. I think he would always like wine you'd always like come on pet me on. i don't want to lay here come on <laughs> hurry or it'd be a lot under his breath be like you fucking dick fucking dick fucking dick fucking hate you <laughs> fucking dick. he'd be calling us dicks a lot man's best friend but not if they could talk not if they could talk uh, no nope. i think cats would actually be more if cats could speak the way that we think they would i think cats would actually be more popular pets I think I think you'd have sadistic <laughs> bastards out there who are like I will I want this fucking cat that w that gives me like Confucius sayings every week. <laughs> <laughs> that People would, would eat that shit up. I would. Oh my gosh! All right, oh, let's man. scroll again and stop. What are some clever examples of misdirection you've seen? What? That's literally the question. What are some clever examples of misdirection you've seen? The first thing I think of is like magicians and... I thought of pickpockets. Pickpockets too, yeah. That's the first thing I thought of. So, I mean, I guess um, magicians are pickpocketers. Who was the dude? Who was the fucking mind freak? Oh, Chris Angel. Chris Angel. Chris Angel. That guy was great. Is he still a thing? Do I, would our viewers know who Chris Angel is? Yeah, I, well, uh, so he doesn't have a show anymore. He has a Cirque du Soleil, like... Uh, like a staple show in uh Vegas. Right. So it's it goes on like still? every week. Yeah, still. Oh, he's been doing that's that like for his a minute. Thing now. Yeah. Okay. So he does that now and I think that's his thing. Like you go to Las Vegas and it's just one of the many shows that you can watch. For those but, who don't know, um Chris Angel is a very like punk rocker emo punk rock, like Alice in Chains meets like, like the Alice a biker. Cooper of magicians. Yeah. yeah. He's just he looks really dirty, but he makes himself look that way. And like, oh, he looks like he belongs in a punk rock band. You're right. Yeah. But he's a magician. But well, he's, he's an magician. illusionist. He's an illusionist. He was good for his time. I did enjoy his show when it was on, but I think he did a lot of things that were like just really dumb also. Like anybody with a brain could watch and say like, well, this is obviously fake. Like he did this one thing once where he was in a restaurant mm -hmm. and You're a tough critic. I thought he was great. Well, he did some he did some uh, magic that was like really cool to watch and really uh, you know out there to where it really did make you question like how did he do it? But right. like what I'm talking about specifically is he used to do things. Uh, one example of he'd go to a restaurant and he would you know sit down with uh, people at, just one family at a table uh -huh. and then he'd say you know like. This wasn't exactly the trick, but he'd say, like, I'm going to make everybody in this restaurant fall asleep, right? And he'd snap his fingers. And then everybody in the restaurant would just, like, like the waitress would fall down and, like, oh, that was clearly crash staged. dishes. Exactly. Yeah. And he did a lot of stuff like that where I was just like, come on. Like, now you're just treating me like an idiot, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, come okay, on. Okay, I'll give you that. But then he walked between buildings and shit. Yeah, and he you're did. like, how the fuck is he doing that? He did have really cool things he did. And I'd be, I would be very 
very excited to go see like his Cirque du Soleil show. I can only imagine what that's like. There was one I remember that he failed on, mm-hmm. and they kind of they put it on the camera that he failed too. It was great. So he tried to bury himself alive, oh, but wow. the way they did it is clearly you have to be able to like breathe. Right. So they put him in like this box, and then his head was sticking out of the box. So his head was outside. Okay, and okay. he could like swivel his head left to right. And then in the box was his body, and they started dumping dirt on him. Okay. Okay. And I think he forgot to put like the illusion part into it mm. because this literally just became them burying a man. And it got deep enough, and he couldn't breathe. It was too heavy <laughs> for him to like breathe. So he was like, stop, stop. And they fucking un- dug him out. And he was like, oh man, that was intense. Uh, I couldn't do it. Uh, yeah, like. Next week on Mind Freak. And I was like, that wasn't even an illusion. There was nothing to freak my mind. Exactly. You just tried to bury yourself and you're an idiot. And I feel like towards the end of the <laughs> show, like that's what a lot of the episodes. I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. You obviously can't breathe under six feet of dirt. He did this one episode too where like, because it also became very obvious. You know, when you do a magician show, especially when you have a camera, it's very easy to stage things and stuff like that too, right? Like, do you remember his like levitating trick where he would like levitate like 25? feet off the ground you know and he'd have like this jesus pose as he yeah, was, you yeah, know yeah. going across well like th- that was all done on a crane and the whole way that you weren't able to see the crane or the like uh the strings attached to him was just because of camera angles oh. you know but so like you were able to do well, more stuff like cheap. that on a well show. i mean everything he, there is no such thing as magic adam well Sorry. yeah well but, excuse me oh but you're, of course there is but you're supposed but, to but you're but the point of a magician is to suspend belief yeah and when you do stupid shit like that you're not suspending belief you're just treating your audience like an idiot well, he you know. used the element of television well, to enhance his trickery. And good for him. I'm just saying the reason why you don't see that television show anymore <laughs> is because <laughs> it just went a little too far. <laughs> I thought he was great. I was at the perfect age for Mind Freak. I was too. And it totally, it. it got me. I loved it. I do enjoy it. But yeah, I mean, to answer that question but you know just that pickpocketers and i saw a pick uh like a famous pickpocketer on he was on some news station once and he was on there of course to show here's how people do this yeah right here's how people pickpocket so you know they go okay like tell us how it works and he's basically telling the history of pickpocketing and how it started and why people did it in the first place and after you know and when you're watching it as just the audience you're like you know oh he's just telling you about pickpocket stuff and then at the end of his like five minute story he was like okay here's your watch here's your pen here's your wallet Uh here's your phone and like and i i certainly didn't notice he was taking anything and then he went through like the steps slow to show like how you know he was able to misdirect you and looking somewhere else while he took this and did that and that stuff was really amazing do you remember the show i just remembered it right now Uh and i watched like every episode of it It was great there's a few seasons and it was this guy. It was like a Bear Grylls kind of guy. Like, you know Survivor Man? Yeah. Okay, so that kind of a dude, all right? Uh-huh. And what he did is he, people would go on the show, and they'd be like, okay, this guy's going to break into your house at some point in the next, like, three or four days. And <laughs> Fun. he's gonna, And we're going to see how protected your house really is. Because these are people who are like, oh, I have good security. You gotcha. Know? So that was the whole premise is this guy's going to break into your house and show how you have terrible security. <laughs> okay. And then in the end, they would clean everything up and fix the security up in the house and uh-huh. make it all nice so that they were super safe. But this guy would do just maniacal shit okay he would like take a full ladder Uh and just smash it through their window and just walk (laughs) into their living room just like really trying to like press a point just like trying to be as obnoxious as he can about breaking in Uh and so now as I'm older I understand this was most likely a set with of actors because yeah. you would never go into an actual neighborhood and start smashing windows in a house that's, <laughs> right. that's insanity so it's clearly a set but they made it look it was great because they would have like people walking around the block mm-hmm. like with their dog and seeing this happen and like stop and kind of look and then they would just keep walking they'd be like yep. oh well they must be working on their house or something. <laughs> and, and this guy he would yeah. tear shit up he would make it a point to like 
undo all the drawers and throw it everywhere. Oh, my gosh. Like, if he could have pissed on the wall, he probably would have done that, too. Right. And, I mean, clearly, because it's a set. Right, 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 It's a fake show. Um, But I really loved it at the time. Did you ever, did you ever, do you remember that at all? No, I, I don't remember that particular one, but I do know there have been some shows that have come out since that are similar. Yeah. Uh, there's one particular guy who I think has a show that does, like, a bunch of different things like that. I think it's actually, like, a YouTube thing, right? He oh. uploads videos. Like, social experience. Now, that might be a real house. Yeah. It's on YouTube. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, well, and, and those ones are just, like, social experiments. So, like, one th- uh, that he does a lot to... Uh, to try to help parents understand how easy it is for like their kids to be abducted, right? Right. Is he'll go up to, you know, in parks and stuff like that and just say, hey, you know, I'm so and so, I'm filming a YouTube channel, I'm just trying to make some points here, you know, and they will ask the parents, do you think that, you know, have you ca- taught your kids well enough, you know, stranger danger, don't go off with people? Do you, so, and they're like, yeah, yeah, I've, I've taught my kids that, we've had many discussions. And he'd say, so, do you, do you mind if I like try to see if I can get your kid to like go in that you know like go over here with me or something like that? And she'll be like, yeah, you know. So the parents will be sitting there watching as this guy will approach him, and he'll have like a little dog and be like, like, hi, oh, you want to pet my dog? And the kid will bend down and pet him and everything. And then uh, the conversation would eventually go with like, do you want to see? I have some other uh, puppies. I have a lot of puppies. Do you want yeah, to see them? You just and, bribe them. And, and he'll just like That's pull out his terrible. hand and say, you know, grab my hand. And then the kid will walk off yeah. with him, you know. And then they'll come back and they'll say, like, see, told you. Like, you don't, you don't ever know. Like, it can yeah. happen at any point. So do you want to know how my mom dealt with that? Hmm. Why me and my sister were never abducted? Hmm. So my mom is from France, okay? Uh-huh. And in France, shit like that happens all the time. Okay. You, you'll get real actually abducted. They'll just pluck you up and run away with you right in front of your mom, okay? okay. At least in the rural zones. Like, I'm not saying France is a war <laughs> zone, people, okay? But right. in Europe, shit gets real sometimes. They'll, okay. just, they'll just pick you up out of the market, dude. Right. So all these parents that are like, yeah, Mike, I've taught my kid about it. I've taught about it. They're trying to teach the kid to fear the strangers. Right. Okay. My mama taught me and my sister to fear her. Mm, yeah. We were so afraid that my mom would beat our ass if we ever <laughs> talked to a stranger, that it wasn't even an option. I don't even want to know your name, mister, because mm-hmm. my mom's going to beat my ass if she sees me talking to you. My parents. That, that is how you do it. Yes. My parents <laughs> literally did the exact same thing with my brother and I. Yep. You they do just, not talk to yeah, anyone. Yeah. That was always it. Anyone. it was, there wasn't even this conversation of like you could get kidnapped. It was just nope. if there's somebody you don't know, you don't talk to them, period, or I beat your ass. Or I beat your ass. Like, so choose choose which one you'd like to do. It might be like, well, we won't talk to anyone. We then. wouldn't talk to anybody. You know, yeah. Did they also, did your parents ever get mad at you if you took money? Like when you were in elementary school, if there was like a kid who had lunch money uh-huh. and you like sold a Yu-Gi-Oh card to him for three bucks or something and you went home, your parents found out. Would they get mad at you for that? Um, I don't know because I never did anything like that. So I did. Okay. <laughs> and my parents, literally there was a rule. You're not allowed to have money. That is not an option. Children uh-huh. do not have money. Um, you can do that when you're a fucking adult. Oh, interesting. If anyone tries to give you money, you tell them no, you don't want their money. And again, if my mom found out that we took a quarter, Uh that we got a quarter at school, she'd beat our ass. Really? Yes, she would. You don't fucking take money from anyone because kids don't need money. Interesting. My my parents, it was actually... (laughs) With my parents, it was actually a little bit of the opposite. I mean, I never never had like... I was never a kid that came home with all of a sudden like $20 in my pocket or right. anything. But like if I ever did have money, my parents were – they were more so like don't fucking spend any of that. You fucking save that shit. Oh, You know, no. like that's how yeah. my parents were anytime I got money. My mom was like, if you need something, you tell me and I'll decide if you need to have it or not. Interesting. But, yeah, children don't have I definitely get that money. though. I definitely get that way of doing things. Well, we were very – the kids don't talk when the adults are around. You right. go play. You don't go mm-hmm. too far, though. You stay where the adults can see you. Yeah. But, yeah, you don't interrupt the adult. It was very – I don't know. So in my mom's upbringing and back in the day and in, in a lot of Just European a upbringings – conservative upbringing, yeah. Children don't really have rights. Yeah, like we were the same here. way. Yeah. A child is almost as close as you can get to, like, property – as well, a human being. Like to to be fair, when you are mm, a kid, you basically are. I mean, you can claim kids on your taxes, you know what I mean? Right. So <laughs> it's like my parents' philosophy was we own your life, mm-hmm. basically. 
until you are old enough to make decisions that we feel are responsible. My, and you know what? I appreciate them for that, yeah, honestly, I, at this I age. Too. I, they kept me very safe and did a great job as parents. Yeah, my, my so. parents were, were very similar and same thing. You know, now that I'm older, I'm like, okay, well, good thing they did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, there's none of this, don't talk to strangers. You don't talk to anybody, yeah. period. <laughs> yeah, that my kids will get the same lesson. Yeah, pretty much. It worked for me. <laughs> All right, well, that brings us to time, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the time. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. Always appreciate it. Uh, Stay tuned for an update coming out very soon here. We have a lot of exciting stuff to announce for April, uh, so that'll be fun. Uh, And, uh, yeah, just remember to follow us on all the social medias, uh, listen to the podcast, share the channel, like, comment, subscribe, and all of that fun stuff. Any final thoughts, Matthew? You know, guys, This is episode 49. Mm -hmm. We've been doing this for a while. If you're still here in the last few seconds of this video, just today's the day. Click the like button. Just click the little thumbs up thing. Let's rack them up just today. Let's just do it. I like that. Just today. Just on episode 49. Just rack it up, guys. All right. Love you. We'll see you for the big 5-0 tomorrow, guys. Big 5-0. Bye-bye.